Harris is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be amended? Not that I'm aware of. I have a report from the library consortium. You want to under other communications or other business? A, re a report? Oh. The White River Cons Valley Consortium that I went to a couple a month or so ago, and then had another meeting today this afternoon. Yeah, if you want to do it like under, yeah, we do it under any other business or. That's fine. I don't know if we formally needed um, a spot for for the resignation from the. Shooting range? No, we or just well, do it under of, that. Item? It was part of okay. the conversation. That's fine. So no, because he's just a volunteer. That's why I um that's why I didn't put it on there. But um and uh I just it's part of the bigger picture over there. Mm -hmm. So okay. Move to approve the agenda as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Right. First, we uh, we do have uh, two appointments this evening. Cecil's still coming for his. Thing. As far as I know. Okay. Um, so our first appointment is here, Francis uh, Brown, and Sylvia's on the Zoom. Zoom call. So they had had a request in regards to um, uh, being removed from the town water system. Um, Teresa Crowley. Yep. So I talked to, had a good conversation with Sylvia. And um, so, as I said in here, they're moving forward uh, with drilling a well. Uh, Sylvia has some serious health issues, which he, she or Francis can elaborate if they choose, which do not allow her to utilize any town water because it's chlorinated. Um, she can't drink it, cook with it, anything. And um, so I wasn't sure uh, because the water ordinance to me had a couple of spots that I was unclear on. So I sent it to Stitzel Page and Fletcher and said, hey, can you interpret these sections for me? And they did, and that's what's in here. And they say that once a property connects to town water, the owner of the property cannot avoid the obligation by discontinuing service. And the current town water, the vacancy rate is $100.83 per quarter. Now, to be clear, Sylvia and Francis receive sewer and water, and they obviously are going to continue to use sewer and want to pay for the sewer. Um, what they don't want to pay for is the, the vacant water rate. Um, I did explain that we didn't always chlorinate our water, and it isn't our choice to chlorinate. We're mandated by the state to chlorinate. Um, so, you know, that's, that's our case. Obviously, you knew if you were on town water when you bought the house, I mean, when you guys bought the house, because you guys paid a water bill. You didn't know that it was chlorinated at the time, but somebody could have asked. I mean, obviously, we've been chlorinated for a few years now. Um, but so I did explain to um, Sylvia that if and this is the if, if the water rate, if say they pay sewer, but don't pay water, eventually when that bill gets large enough, it, it could trigger a tax sale because we can tax sale, not just on delinquent taxes, but on delinquent utilities. So obviously I don't want it to come to that. Um, and um, I told her, I, I'm not a water commissioner, so you know, the rules. So I could provide you the information. I sent Francis and Sylvia a copy of the agenda, a copy of the no, and um, a copy of the law and lawyer's interpretation. That way I promised her that I'd give her everything that you had. So, <clears throat> so that's where it stands. I'm not sure if Francis or Sylvia has something more to add or if that, I tried to just hit the highlights. You can, or you can just come think, closer. Yeah, it might help Paul, who isn't here. Yeah, one of our board members is remote tonight. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the acoustics in here is terrible. So, <laughs> you'll yeah, have to, you'll have to be louder gonna, than normal to speak in this room. So, that's not going to give any sound for us, but it will for the people who are remote. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
All right, so uh, so I guess you're all pretty much aware why I'm here, Trish. Explain to our trees. Yeah. Explain it pretty well to you. But the fact that my wife can't drink the water, she can't even shower in the water, because she has many <clears throat> chemical sensitivities and uh, Clorox. She doesn't use it because her hands turn lobster red. Yeah, she said that she had chemical yeah. sensitivity issues. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, other chemicals also. I mean, she's just allergic to basically any chemical. We don't use any kind of chemicals in her household. Yeah. So can you hear him, Gene? He's saying that his wife's allergic to that. Okay. So it's kind of terribly, terrible acoustics in here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so therefore, you know, we've decided the only alternative. I mean, there's filters. I know you've mentioned filters, but we've researched all the filters, and they none of them basically take chlorine out of the water. <clears throat> oh, so our alternative is to drill a well, which is going to cost us a lot of money. And we're on fixed income, uh, a small fixed income, and we uh, can't afford to pay for something that we're not using. I mean, like to me, it's like paying for a dead horse. You've probably heard that expression. Uh, we still would use the sep uh, septic, uh, and we're willing to pay for that, but we feel that our bill should be cut in half and when the water is shut off after we drill the well. <clears throat> So the water won't be even hooked up to your heating system or anything? Yeah, we'll, it will. we'll be drilling a well right away. Well, we talk to well drillers. And so the well drillers will hook the water to, for, um, from the well to the house for, correct. for your heating and all that. I wasn't yeah. sure what you'd do. Yeah. We'll use water for your, your toilet. Or if you want water to be long or wash pot. No, none of that. Well, have, all the water you use will come from that well. It will. What do you mean? Will. Yeah. I and mean, right now we're using, of course, town water for, like you said, flushing the toilet, uh, water in the posies, uh, what that takes. Uh, we haven't even washed our car since we've been up there, so I can't see. So, you know. Basically, we don't use the town water anyways, but. So know. the town will shut off your water at the curb stop then? Correct. Which qualifies you for the vacancy rate. If we shut off the water, you get the vacancy rate. So, but. Question. Are the sewer and water bills separate or is it all one. It's one bill, but they're two separate rates. So, so he so will get a bill for sewer and he could get a bill for vacant water. So we're only talking about the water portion. The yes. sewer portion is still Yep, he's still going to use the sewer portion. Yep. So because they're not going to put in a separate that, system. that's but yeah. That's yep. important. Yep. Yep. So I just want to make sure I got things clear. So um I think there's two things being discussed here. So I think um, from what um, Mr. Brown has said is that he's looking to discontinue all water and all bills associated with the town water. Yeah. Um, and then we are talking about if he went, typically what happens is if you're not using town water. So, so the, the, uh, the statutes that we have, so in, in place for water and sewer and other things is, you know, we have a limited amount of users in our system. And 
So there are statutes that are put into place to protect the town's interest in delivering water in that area. So your house happens to be in, in, in the water district. So, so we protect ourselves by, by putting def, different statues in there because it lets us, for whatever reason, let's just say everybody started to drill a well for whatever reason, um, then it could really put an onus on the town for, you know, if you had, I'll make it up, 300 users, now you only have 200 users. That means, you know, the, the, rates, the rates change mm -hmm. at a drastic amount. So the, the challenge we have at the board is, so, I mean, I think we definitely hear you on the humanitarian end of things of that, the water in some ways to, to your family is, is not usable for anything be, because of this, the situation you have. But on, but on the formal policy end of things when it comes to being water commissioners is, it, it sounds like that the, the, best, the best that we could do for you would be to put you on what we call a vacancy rate, which means you, you wouldn't be using any water, but it, it still pays for the system to be delivered water to your doorstep. Now, the difference is that right now is- It's only 80, it's, you right, have to pay so, for 80%. It's only a 20%. So it's like a 20% deferrent. So it, if we decide to do that as board commissioners, you know, the, the bill of, you know, $130 may be a hundred, but it wouldn't be zero. So we, we wouldn't be able to get you down to zero, a zero bill. Um, Hope you understand that portion of it. it. Right. Is there anyone else on the water system that have drilled wells in the town? No, that I know. I mean, there, years ago, there were other people that extended past <clears throat> on Pleasant Street, <clears throat> but the town had issues with the delivering of water. I think the pressure. So they did end up, the town removed several people from the system and the town paid to install wells for them because the town was responsible for getting these people water and they could not because of so many leaks in the system and they didn't have the pressure right. to get it to them. So that happened, that's the only, that's what I know about. There may be something else, but those are the, that's the only thing I'm aware of. And I don't know exactly how many houses that was. Um, um, one, I, two, three, four, five. Five houses. Yeah, stop and, that, and, that and that was because the ordinance, the town had to provide them with water. And they couldn't because of the, such big issues they were having with the system at the time. So they drilled them wells. But if someone else currently has a well, um, I'm not aware of it personally. Some, somebody else here maybe, but I'm not. So usually if you're on, there's more water users than there are sewer users. So some people do just get a water bill and then some get both. So there's about 300 and I don't know, maybe 340, 350 connections with water and about two thirds of that also have sewer and, and, and certainly you're one of them. But And then like Therese was saying, 80% of the total bill that you get billed a quarter is for what we call fixed cost. So the fixed cost is, you know, from the treatment plant to, you know, all the pipes delivered to your curb stop before it comes into your building. And then the other 20% of cost is more of a variable cost, like how much water users are using on the system, treating X amount of gallons. So, um, so in some cases it's, I guess this, if this was me anyways, um, and you were gonna choose between having your water shut off and paying a vacancy rate, which is 80% of the cost anyways, or having your water left on for an extra 20%, it might be, you know, I know you're not happy with it, but it might be better just to leave it on to use it to wash your car, or water your flowers, or, you know, I, I, I know it's not what you wanna hear. It's, the, the thing is, if we allow, which, which clearly we have provisions inside the um, the water policy, but if we if we allowed one person to drill a well inside the town, then it could allow everybody to do that overnight. You know, 
for whatever reason, and um, it could right. be a drastic I, shift in the policy. I think for, for me, and I, this is where we're all probably weighing this out, is like the, the hard thing and the sticky thing about this is we create a very slippery slope, right? If we allow one user to be removed because they drilled a well, then what prevents us from doing that for a different user? So a different idea, which Dave was sort of on the same page I was on, was could we look at this as a hardship abatement? And do it in an entirely different way, where it's very case specific. And I can't, I can't recall off the top of my head what our abatement rules would say in this case. But I know we have had hardship abatement cases before, and we've talked about them. Yeah, you've abated like interest and penalty on, you know, on water sewer before. Um, I think that you have abated. Um, I don't think you, I'm not sure you've abated anything huge with water sewer, have you? That I can think of. I know you've done. Uh, giving people breaks on their bill when they're doing construction or improvements to to I think there are properties. Seven specific reasons why you can abate. Well, anything. that's taxes, right? Well, our, our you water mean, might be with you, different. this yeah. the water ordinance has to prevail, and and right now the water ordinance states you know they can't disconnect or they can, but they have that they're responsible for the rate. I think in the past. You know, we, I could go back through the water ordinance and we could look at it that way at a future meeting. I could go back and reread the ordinance again and see what, because you guys had passed some rules about the vacancy rate. And I know one of the things that was if they had the water shut off at a residential home, you'd only charge them the vacancy rate, like if they go away for winter. But Right, but I guess I'm thinking something totally different. Yeah, you are. I think so too. Right. You're thinking just abating their water bill. Yeah, or even even being able to come to some common ground or some middle ground that maybe it's not a full abatement, but it's you know they're still hooked on, hooked onto the system even though it's shut off at the curb stop. Right, but for for that, and so say in the future they sell their property that property is still hooked up to the water, right? They're still selling that amenity with the property. We're not fully disconnecting them like the folks you were talking about on Pleasant Street, right. but sort of coming to some something different. And I know that that, you know, then with our abatement rules, it might require them to come back every right. so often to re-up this, or when there are new board members, they may make a different set of, you know, there's all the layers that come with abatements. Right. But, and and your policy or your ordinance, excuse me, it's ordinance, the ordinance, you know, is more about when you were going to offer vacancy rate, but I would have to go back and, and look at it again. I'm happy to do that if that's what you guys want to do. For now, I have no problem going back and and reading that those sections of the water ordinance again. And I mean, because the lawyer's interpretation was pretty clear. It was yeah. like walking in tonight. It was like I don't feel like we have an alternate option. And so then right. the idea becomes how how can we still work with our our residents, but also still be responsible water commissioners. Right. So maybe what you're talking about is maybe a less than 80%, whereas they still pay something to the town for water. Um, but, um, you know, some. Right. And it'd be case specific. So I recognize that they're, that well, in itself is fraud. It becomes. A, yeah, you know, it's true. Because uh, Mrs. Brown has very specific health issues that are probably extremely uncommon. Um, so if that's what you guys want to do, I'm certainly happy to research that and you would have to make a decision another night. Yeah, I mean, that might be the only way to do it. I mean, it's when it comes to the ordinance itself, it's pretty black and white, like like Lindley was just saying. It's the ordinance is there for two reasons. It's one to protect the town for so that none of the customers jump off of the uh, the water district. But it's also there, like we said, in the Pleasant Street where where you have the right to water. So if, if all of a sudden we fail to bring water to your house, then we are responsible for that too. So it kind of, it goes both ways. So the other way that Lindley was just saying is um, that sometimes we're able to do things is under abatements, which isn't, it's not a, a permanent, um, like we're shutting your water off and you're not getting the bill. It's more of a, um, you know, something that you have to do either by the quarter or, you know, uh, and it has to meet certain criteria um, for abatement. So I guess. Yeah, I thought I, ha I have. Um, so I guess I that's what property. Therese was going to do. Have, was, yeah, tax assessment. Was I check to see I what. Was. Yeah. What, yeah what is, I'll look like when we do tax abatements, um, it has to 
fill one of the seven criteria, right, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, the, the, the abatement that you're talking about is done by the BCA and it's based on tax tax abatements only. Um, right. So I guess Therese was gonna Therese was gonna look into seeing what the what if any your, the abatement formal policies ordinance. would be in our ordinance to allow an abatement to be done on the water and sewer. I'll take a look. Is that so I, I wonder if there isn't another whole possibility, and that is, are there public um, funds available for people with disabilities that might be applied for so that the town is paid, but it, you don't have to pay for it, but it's because this is becomes classified as a person with a disability who now cannot use the town's water, but you're obligated to pay for it. Is there another source of funds that you could apply for some sort of assistance uh, that might be able to cover that and, and meet your needs um, while at the same time meeting the towns? Yeah, you should talk to, um... Oh, Paul, I'm drawing a blank. Um, the bigger agency, Capstone. Capstone, there you go. Um, so that would be one thing is that you as Sylvia could reach out to Capstone, um, like a community action and see what they have available for funds um, that may be able to assist with that. Um, you could also possibly speak to, um, you know, Sylvia could speak to her doctor. Maybe they're aware of some, you know, federal funding or something um, be because of her condition um, that could do that. So that would be something that you guys could look into as capstone and other funding to, to try to pay for it. While we look, while I'll look at the ordinance and see what the, the water commissioner's sewer commissioner's options are. But capstone would also be able to look into, I threw out disability, but I also don't know what there is in terms of if you're my age, uh, help or assistance for those who are retired on a limited income, et cetera, et cetera, they would have access to all of that and might be where you, I think that would be a good place to, to look uh, while we do research on this end. In other words, is there another way to get the bill paid is what I'm saying, if our hands are tied. So it sounds like just to recap for now, we're the board, it sounds like that we're formally going to deny the removal of the removal from the water system. But we're going to look in to see if there's any possible abatement that could be done. That's on the towns end of things. That sounds right. right. Keep it on. Makes sense. I mean, I don't think you have a choice. You can't allow them to discontinue. You'd be violating right. your own ordinance. So that's right. true. So basically, yeah. So no, you can't. Just gonna act or what you can, but we can look at other options. See on the vacancy rate. Yeah, we can look at the the abatement. Yeah, and see where we go. So at a minimum for right now, we can move you to the vacancy rate, which is eighty percent of what you're currently getting charged. And then we will look at the abatement process to see if we can abate your water rather than take you off it. Um, and then maybe Therese can. Yeah, Maybe Therese, after, after the fact, can send you um, the list of the agency that has some information, maybe on some assistance that you might be able to get um, third party wise. Yeah. Um, that wouldn't have anything to do with the town. Yeah, I, there we, may be a couple options I can send you about assistance. And then we follow back up at the next meeting? Yeah, so I think you should make a formal motion, though, to deny their request. To deny, but do we have to make a motion to put on vacancy, or that's something that you can do by um, yourself? No, I think you should do both. I think you should make a formal decision that you're going to deny their request, um, and that you're, but you're going to move into vacancy rate. Yes, yeah, both. Put it all in one motion. Sorry, I'm trying to make a note to send Sylvia capstone and other information, and other water funding information. So you were mentioning a bit ago about people that are within the 
water, whatever you call it, they have their own scepter. So do they pay? They wouldn't pay scepter to the family. They just pay water, right? Some people just have right. water, so they just pay a water bill. We don't have like any. My house, for instance, has water, but no sewer. Right. So I right. just pay a water bill and I have septic to my yeah. house. Yeah, and we don't have anyone who gets just a sewer bill because they go hand in hand, of course. So, Usually, um, yeah. yeah, so, but, but we do have several that just get water bills because the sewer system doesn't extend far to the out. far enough out to their properties. But so it looks like we'll go to, um, I'll schedule, I'll put this back on the agenda to talk so that they can talk about abatement at their next meeting, which I think is the 22nd. Is our next meeting the 22nd? Yeah. Yes. Okay, the 22nd. So I'll do that. But in the meantime, we'll look at the, I'll look at the ordinance and I'll send you and Sylvia some information about capstone, other places that might help pay for the water rate, water, if, um, if, if the bill, you know, if the bill is going to continue. So I won't have a solid answer for two weeks, but at least I'll give you some people to start talking to. Okay. I'll wait to the 22nd, you said of this month. Yeah. Or the next day or whatever. Yeah, I'll send you the stuff and in the mail like I did this time. And uh, if nothing, nothing happens, I would just have to go further, you know. You, I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. I said if nothing happens with that, I would just have to go further, uh, you know, legally. Even. Which, which is certainly your right. Yep, absolutely. Because so, yeah. Well, hopefully we can, we'll see what we can come up with. I just, I wasn't reading the ordinance for abatement. I was looking for the rules about disconnection. So I'll go back through it and read it again and see what it says. Okay. And send you some information about that as well. All right. Thank, All right. Thank, thank you. you. Time. We, we want to help. Thank you. If we could. So we'll just need a... Okay. So we'll just need a motion to formally deny the removal of 85 Geico Lane from the water system, um, but we will um, effective immediately start them on vacancy. Our next bill, yeah, yeah. Okay, Lindley moved it. Dave, Dave seconded it, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right, Cecil. Didn't show up loud this time. <laughs> you bring your fan club with you. Yeah. Let's not no. say we did. <laughs> see, see, see. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, it, I guess Cecil's appointment and the next item up are kind of yep. flowing together here. Yep. So, if the board doesn't have an issue with you mind. Do we mind just doing both topics at the same time? Fine with that. So, um, so I don't know if you knew or not, Cecil. We had the the form, well, the formal adoption of the updated rules and regulations to affect artificial flowers at the cemetery that we had planned on doing tonight, as well as as well as um, your reappointment um, as cemetery foreman. So I know in the past it sounded like talking with Teresa that there was some misunderstanding between whatever many boards ago or yeah. administrations on what exactly your title is. Um, so the I guess the correct title would be cemetery foreman. So the 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 board is the commissioner of pretty much you name it yeah. water sewer. <laughs> gun shooting area, cemetery, yeah. you know, so we, we end up being the commissioners for everything at some point. Um, and then anybody else is usually uh, a foreman or. Yeah, or um, a sexton. He's either so, a sexton commonly known as the cemetery foreman. So, so, but yeah, and Cecil is aware of the changes to F because I talked to Cecil about yeah. the wording um, to, cause I wasn't sure how far away when I drafted it, like six inches from the monument. And then I asked yeah. Cecil, he's like, no, you're too far away. Put it, you know, tight to the monument. So he did help me with the wording. I, I thought the word, I, I mean, yeah. I thought the wording was great. Um, and, and thanks Paul for, for 
showing us some other options of floral and decoration policies that you had come up with. Um, but I guess right now the language that we would would change to would be um, the new language would be artificial flowers are permitted from Memorial Day to Labor Day, but must be removed by the first Saturday after Labor Day. Flowers not permanently planted must be secured to monument or hung from a shepherd's hook that is securely installed tight to the monument. Any flower or decoration not properly installed will be discarded. So that was. Secured to, okay, must be secured to monument. So you want me to say to the monument, okay. Um, and, and I guess the way, the way I see this adoption to the policy is, well, anytime you make the adoption to the policy, it's a formal process, but it's also in some ways in my eyes, a temporary thing too. Like this was giving the option to individuals that wanted to see the artificial flowers, the option um, for us to trust them on making sure that this is gonna get picked up too. And, and I would assume that if we get to October or November and Cecil comes and says, you know, there's discarded artificial flowers all over the place, or if next year in May or whatever, you say, we got all these, you know, new ornaments that have shown up, but they're not fastened to headstones or they're just, you know, improperly put together, then we may have to, you know, take harsher direction on, on what to display in the cemeteries. Yeah. The signs are currently up. Yeah, I currently, I, well, I wasn't going out pulling them up. And, uh, I didn't ask Dave to do it. So right now he's right. I drive by the East Bethel Cemetery all the, you know, every day. And, um, He's right. I mean, people, there's some people that are obeying the signs. I haven't had the time or the manpower to deal with it, so it's kind of he does a nice job. He does such a nice job, Harold. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess if nobody has any complaints, I mean, this is this is the language that we had talked about a meeting, two meetings ago, I think, almost now. So, um, if you don't have anything on that question, yep. So I couldn't hear what Cecil was saying, but does that mean that the ones that, for example, the artificial flowers in the plastic containers with the spike coming out the bottom would not be, would have to be in a shepherd's hook or somehow affixed to the monument? That's kind of the wording that we use. Cecil was just talking about leaving the signs up, but this okay. says it must, what you guys had agreed to the night that the motion was made, you guys agreed that they had to be, um, oh, that we would have the, the cemetery foreman and the cemetery commissioners would come up with rules, but you liked the idea of the shepherd's hook. And then, <clears throat> so that, I also looked at your wording from that policy. Um, because when we talked about that. how close to the monument should the shepherd's hook or something be. So then we talked about being tightly connected to the, yeah, so those- To the monument. Yeah, so we're saying they either have to be planted in the ground, mm -hmm. put on a shepherd's hook, or secured somehow to the monument. So yeah, so just those ones with a spike at the bottom are, would be a, probably would be a no-no because um, they're not permanently planted, they're not secured to the monument, and they're not on a shepherd's hook. So I think those would be mm -hmm. not allowed. Yeah, I just, right. I just wanted to have that out there because that seemed to have been a popular one that we found, you know, <laughs> when, they, when they did the cleanup. So just to make it, it clear. <laughs> it 
Some I of those like were the wording. I like the I like the wording. I think it, it okay. works very well. All right. So Gene wants we're gonna add the word the must be secured to the monument. Um so I'll need to do that. I also had updated the rates because you had approved the rate increase. So I did have to adjust that for the eight lots. So um redid the math there. And then Dave Eddy had asked, and I saw that in here that. It does say 10% of all sales will be dedicated to development of an improved record keeping system and the acquisition of future new cemetery areas. Is Fairview, can it expand? Can Fairview expand? Is, could Fairview hold any more lots? Oh yeah. Okay. Because it says in the policy that 10% of the sales are supposed to be being used for better record keeping of the lots and future development of you know so of the site. So I wasn't sure. Are is East Bethel Cemetery full? Pretty much. Yeah, I wondered. And Gilead. And Gilead. Christian Hill. Oh, Cherry, maybe a little bit. So that's, you know, that's something to think about too, I guess. I wondered um, how many more. So really Fairview is the only one that currently that probably could be expanded to hold more. I would guess probably about Fairview. Yeah, I'll have to look at the map. I was curious about the borders pretty, of that. It's pretty hard to tell by the map. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I well, mean, the property tax map, yeah. Cherry Hill, you've got a few up there. If you want to use the swamp, you've got a lot more. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> There's probably big rules against that. I think that bear in due time will sink down and we'll just keep putting them on top of the other. There you go. Nice thought. Oh. So, so okay. So how does that so now that you said the 10% thing, so currently what what are we are we not putting any money aside from No, that? they do. The cemetery money all goes into its own cemetery fund. It yeah. does not go into the general fund at all. Um, it all goes in there. We budget for cemetery mowing, you know, or right. like we budgeted for the wall to fix the wall. So we, you know, but, but do we have a separated subsection in there that 10% of each thing gets dropped? I don't know. I'd have bucket? to ask, I'd have to ask Paul. Uh, Cause it might be something that we all ask uh, him. The, Something yeah, that says we should have, but we allocate some of the money that's yeah. there towards. Well, and I don't know how she does. I, I'm assuming that she puts some in the cemetery, some in perpetual care, some in reserve fund. So the reserve fund, I assume, is what's going to, um, you know, to do that. But I'll double check with Pam. Tomorrow's the yeah. um, primary, so I'll check with her. Yeah, I'd ask her, ask her first thing in the morning. Yeah, I will. You right? need it by nine. Yeah, I'll ask your first thing. So we'll find out, and then she's yeah, and then she's on vacation. So we'll find out in a couple of weeks. But I think that's the way she allocates it because that cemetery fund is fund fifty, and it does have a breakdown of money in it. So, um, but if you guys are all set with the draft, you can make a motion to accept the policy, and then I'll just fix that one thing and take the word draft out of it. Yeah. So just need a motion to accept the. Cemetery rules and regulations policy as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And then, assuming Cecil still wants to do it, we'll Whoa. make make a motion to. How much you put there? Right. That was part of the question. Yeah. So I mean, we we have talked about well, not just the cemetery. We've been slowly. Um, sorry. Is it G? Um, we've been slowly trying to get our appointment um, values to current. Um, and what I say is we, we started looking at some of these a couple of years ago going, you know, ugh, the health officer, $600 a year. That's, you know, ridiculous. And, and, you know, we, so we've been kind of slowly going down the line of, you know, reappropriating uh, more correct funds for individuals, you know, like that. So it, it has definitely been something we've been talking about. Um, I know the, the health commissioner one on the, well, interim basis, we've changed it to an hourly thing just so that we could see 
how many hours the health commissioner actually puts into something, but but that person that's doing right now is deferred their yeah he's not their income. So, um, I mean, uh, what was it, Dave? You were acting cemetery commissioner for a couple of weeks. What did what do you think? He was acting cemetery for me. He was doing I, his I job. He is a commissioner. I got to do the other. He was just doing it. <laughs> and I he can was... tell you, you, take that five hundred dollars and stick it with the sun, no chance. <laughs> yeah. I know how many hours I had in my first three weeks and months. So I don't think that, uh, I think we are suggesting 1500 rather than 500. And I think that is a, a reasonable place to go to and we'll see how that works. And then reevaluate it at budget Reevaluate it at another, another time. In the fall. Is, is that something that we can do and make effective immediately so that Cecil has paid yep. that amount within this year. Yes. And then and then we'll reevaluate for mm -hmm. next year. Okay. I believe so. Cool. Anybody, Gene or Paul, anybody else have any questions or comments in regards to that? No, nope, sounds good to me. Okay. How do you feel about that? Fifteen hundred dollars. How much? Fifteen hundred. I could live with that. Okay. Until 2060. <laughs> yeah. well, 2060? Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> years, so that. That's right. Um, I want to get one thing clear. Uh, if I'm up there cutting brush or working on the wall or cleaning stones, that's going to be extra. I'm not going to include that in any 1500. Right. And that's the way it's been in the past. Cecil right. has done work he cut so we got a bill because Cecil was I not guarantee that probably already this year I've burnt well over five hundred dollars worth of gas. Yeah. I think I think one thing that at least what I'd like to see Cecil is and we do, we're doing this currently with the health commissioner is we're we're just trying to understand those positions a little better on so right now if we do the fifteen hundred dollars as a stipend, right? But maybe if you can work with Therese to kind of give her Maybe it's once a month. Like, here's about how many hours I put in a month, just so that we can try and gauge we'll that. We go half an hour here, 15 minutes over there. Yeah. And and back to the town clerk, you might spend half an hour, you might spend sure. 45 minutes and yeah. still not come up with anything. Right? Yeah. And then so you're all kind of hard to keep track of your time. Done that. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's just an, an estimate of what you what you think is good, because Yes. In order for them to, in order for them to pay fair stipends, they're trying to figure out how many people, you know, these hours people are working right. so they can compensate them. But, um, but yes, yeah, so we've done that in the past. We had someone trim, no, cut two trees at the Gilead Cemetery, and I just got that bill. And um, you know, it's 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 yeah. pricey. So, so it would be nice to get some idea. informally yeah. some some information back to trees to say. Like last year, I made four trips to East Bethel to sell a grave because they couldn't make up their mind what they wanted to there, 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 or somewhere else. Right. So you, you, yeah. you can't, yeah. you got to give them yeah. the opportunity to get it where they want. It. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, and then we can better balance what the yearly stipends are based upon the hours work. I mean, if all of a sudden I'll make it up, if all of a sudden we say, wow, this is a. Is that that what I'm getting paid for, you want to pay more? <laughs> Not <laughs> really. <laughs> no, but it will kind of look at future compensation. I mean, if uh, I'm just making it up, but I mean, let's just say just the cemetery foreman piece of it, you spend. What does that mean? <laughs> You're going to sell the lots. You're going to sign the certificates. You're going to dig the graves. You're going to, yeah. And they're going to be made out foreman, not commissioning. Right, because that's the policy. Apparently, yeah, different towns are different. I think, like in Brantree, they're elected cemetery commissioners, some, which is interesting. And funeral certificates come through both foreman and commissioner. So two people have to sign it? No, oh. only one, but there's a separate place to do that. Yeah. So yeah, it says in the definition that you're a sexton or a cemetery foreman. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you're you're a delegated representative from the board, so talk to somebody anyway before I do it. Yeah. I think Dave a couple different times. One of them was up to Fairview when we pulled up the cedar brush. Yeah. Which it looks a lot nicer, I think. Yeah. Sounds uh, good. Getting so, to for one, that. And one thing I'd like to see done is a new fence up to Olympus Cemetery. That is a mess. At Olympus? Any cemetery. Can you get us like an estimate on that and then we can see where because yeah, I'll be if you can get us an estimate, we'll be working on the budget here October. Well, so it's coming right up. Because we put some money in last year for the wall. And then I thought I thought we put oh we put some into repair maybe the fence at Fairview. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if you give me an estimate on on Olympus, we can I you don't have to do it tonight. One but. reason I didn't do anything last year or this year is because lumber's gone so sky high. Right. Yeah. Uh. I know. Hopefully by you, you know next when the new budget kicks in next July, hopefully by then things have right. been uh, ratcheted down. Yeah, we'll see. While, while we're talking about spending money, uh huh. There's a lot of work could be done at Cherry Hill Cemetery. As now that I have had opportunity to walk all over it. Uh, as far as cutting trees, there are six dead hemlock, and two of them are going to be on graves by this time next year. All that, and then pine trees up to Gilead have got to come down. Luckily, the, these, hem, these hemlock, I mean, I don't know why one of them, I don't know why it's still standing. And just above there, uh, by my, my family's grave site, there's trees that haven't been trimmed up since I was a kid. You, know, you can barely drive a small car through there without getting all scratched to shit. That's at Cherry Hill. And then there's a pine, three pine at Gilead. So that's something that I could, um, I could ask like Derek Aldrigetti or saw a local logger for a price to cut some trees and just build it into the next year's budget. If we, you know, or see if we have money in this budget. Lucky last when that big pine came down up to Gilead, it didn't smash any stones. Yeah, it knocked one over, but it didn't break it. And the well, next one is that considered perpetual care? So that if the town has in budget for the money, can't that come out of the cemetery fund itself? I would think. I would think so because I mean, it seems like those tree removal would be perpetual care. So we just don't want to break up a bunch of stone that nobody knows how to repair. Exactly. That's better, true. better to get ahead of it before the stones are broken. I think the street big pine up to Gilead, the two of them are half dead. There's six on that lower section of Cherry Hill that are dead. Yes. Two that are I don't know, like I said, I don't know why yeah, I don't know why they're still standing. So would that just be as cemetery commissioners, do we just need to make the motion to appropriate the money from pet perpetual care to cover the cost of Yeah, care? yeah, I think yeah, that's what we should do, do that so. tonight. You can do that tonight and then we and then Cecil or I, one of us can you know, he can you have somebody in mind who you'd want to cut the trees for you? We've been looking for somebody for Gilead. Don't nobody want to do it. I, I can ask Except around. for Chris. <laughs> yeah, I can ask around. So I'll ask Gary. And Chris, Chris actually owns the meadow behind the cemetery. Yeah. And he doesn't have a problem dropping them down into the cemetery and cleaning them up. Yeah. I mean, if somebody wants to cut them. Right. So I can ask, I could ask Derek. Um, I could ask Morgan if on his. Okay. I don't know what it will cost. I could find out. I mean, Morgan Drury, he might want to do it on his own time for the firewood. I could ask Morgan too. He's certainly qualified, but all right. So we'll do that. All right. So, all right. We'll work on it. Since we're only now becoming clear of the distinction between commissioner and foreman, do we understand or have any place where we have, what are the responsibilities of each? Well, let's see how it, it lays it out in the 
the, re the reason I'm asking is we're also, uh, there were some things that you were doing that you were being reimbursed for or paid for, uh, and you were saying that that's going to continue to happen. Are we clear what those are and what those aren't? What is it that you're doing as the sexton or the foreman for the commission and what you're not? Uh, I think it would be helpful if we had that spelled out. I think that what the policy says is, base, is that he's the appointed representative of the commissioner. So I think that he's carrying out your duties as cemetery commissioner. So, he's, he's doing the stuff, he's doing the work for you. The only thing he can't do is make the rules to make the policy that the commissioners have to do. But he does all the, the day, you know, he basically runs the cemetery as your representative. But there are certain things that we, what you're getting at is what like, I'm saying is if we've got something like we have we have to hire somebody to come in to do X, Y, or Z, like the mowing. But we have, we're hiring somebody to talking about hiring somebody to come in to do logging or to take down some trees. Are those the kinds of things that, as the foreman, rather than having the authority to just decide, does that need to come to the commission? Well, I do the season. I did the mowing bids. We put them out. We reviewed. Okay. We we drafted right. the That's... RFP, and then they went out, and then you guys awarded the bids. I'm just. I, I just want to be clear. We did. Yeah. So basically, he comes in. If we need to issue an RFP, we do. If it's something big like that, then you guys will. Then I bring it to you guys, and you guys do. Otherwise, if it falls under my bailiwick, then I'll just pay for it. And then I do it. Go wrong with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, Obviously. It's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 They figured that out. So, but all right. I mean, I just want to be. Well, I think I, I want you to have the authority to do what, what you do. What might be helpful in this case is, and we may not have tonight, but what might be helpful is, is to have a a drafted up version of the responsibilities. I can look at the regulations and the for, cemetery for the cemetery foreman, that I think is what Jane's looking at. Kind of like a job description. Do you have time to list all of them? I don't think no. so. Not tonight. Not tonight. Love to hear it. But yeah. I'm thinking, you know. Because you he already drafted well, something. You've always got the phrase that we can get something that may be required. signed up. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a look. I'll look in the statutes. Well, right. I think it's pretty clear that the years. So, yeah. so okay. right now, just not to get too far off track mm -hmm. here. Um, so what I'd like to do is do a motion. The first motion would be to um, to increase the stipend on uh, per year for the cemetery foreman um, to be fifteen hundred dollars a year. Effective immediately. Effective July first, yep. which is the budget season that we're in. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. And then, and then we'll do, and then Cecil is seeking reappointment as the cemetery foreman. Does that sound correct, Cecil? That's correct. So if, unless anybody has uh, anything there, I just needed a motion to accept uh, Cecil as reappointment to the cemetery foreman. So moved. Second. A second by Paul in favor. Aye. 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 All right. And I would say, you know, definitely Cecil, any like feel free, you know, August, September of each year to get with Therese and give her your wish list of he usually does. These are the things we really would like to do, maybe in the priority that you want to do them. And then, you know, because budget time is us throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall and see how it all settles in. And you might get some things and not others, but at least you know you can get some of those things taken care of. Also, think that you should authorize the tree removal. Um, of it looks like six. You got six. So, so I would say you know you're looking at ten to twelve trees here because you've got nine that you can think of off the top of your head. So there may be yeah, more. Can we so just, could we say hazardous trees? Yeah. And let it be a little bit more open to yep. the decisions that need to be made. Yeah, and you might want to 
of up to a certain amount of money because it could get pricey fast. So yeah, how much money is in that account at this point? I you know? honestly don't have it in front of me, so I I don't know, but I would think, could you think you could get we could get all those trees cut for five grand? Sorry, what? You think we could get ten those six dead hemlock and uh, three pine cut for five thousand dollars? I would hope. I would hope so too. I think you could. It's, yeah, it's we'll look around and see what we can do. Maybe more too, because depends on what people want the wood for. Yeah. yeah. This guy, guy, could cut a tree for my neighbor with seven thousand dollars for one pine tree. Time. I know it's not. I know we've had we've paid. Especially if we're asking time. the whole other way. Well, why don't why don't we for now? Well, I don't know. I mean, I do we want to just go get a quote? I think we should figure out how much it's going to be, and then we'll just approve it. I think we should it. have a number to work with to find yeah. out what it might cost. Okay. Why don't you just get see if you can get something, a numbered I'll fixed number for the next meeting, and then we can approve I'll it at the next meeting. I'll talk to Morgan and Derek Aldrigetti and, yeah. and Gare, see if we can come up with some pricing. And, yeah, he, he's done it before. I'll ask him. He's usually pretty good about it. Okay. Chris doesn't have a problem with him knocking down the meadow when he shouldn't have. Yeah. You'll have to do it after they pay, that's all. Yeah. And can you talk to Chris Forrest and see if he cares? If, does he want the wood if we cut him and drop him in his field? He don't want it. He doesn't. So we'd have to, whoever cuts it has to clean it's it up. No good for it. nothing. Huh? No. Pine's no good for anything. Yeah, true. What it, is the helmet? Yeah, an outdoor furnace or something. Yeah. I don't want it. Okay, I'll um I'll talk to a couple people, see what I can find out, and I'll call you. Are you going to put this new in the paper? But what in the paper? <clears throat> new policy because we caught hell because we didn't the <laughs> because we didn't make the new, public the new rules the regulation. Oh, oh yeah, well they should know they were here. I did publish. Boy, I don't remember what I put in. The, I'll put it in the paper. <laughs> Good, good call. Yeah, I know. I True enough. Yet. I will put that wording in paper. Put wording in paper. You knew about it. I knew about it. I don't see the paper. Yeah, I know. I think that would have been enough. But all right. So we're going to leave the signs up. Nobody's complaining. If we get a bunch of complaints, I'll let you know and we'll go from yeah, there. But right now, it. nobody has said anything. Like I said, 99% of the people are going by the signs. You got, I think there's only five graves in Fairview. We've got whatever yeah, on them. And we've <laughs> more, so. Before you leave, uh, at some point, I would like your opinion on sites for natural burial. In other wow. words, natural burial. Sites that, well, <laughs> that's. But whether we have any such, any, any we don't. Have, well, no, we can't. We can't legally do it in the cemetery. I think I read that regulation. It's gonna be tough though if somebody's bought a lot and they want to be with their family if it's no, not no, in that no, section. No. But, no, I know. I'm just asking. I'm just curious. I'm, I'm, I, it seems to me that that is something that people may, in Bethel residents may want, mm -hmm. and the current policy requires a vault. So that's not a green barrier. Right. right. Now, so my the question is one of information. You know a little bit about green burials. But is there a way that the town of Bethel can provide that? And where, even if it's in whatever town forest, I'm, I'm, well, I, well, that's, yeah, I'll look. We, I'll there look. are ways, there are ways to do it. I'm just asking if we Paul might Carl. need to Paul look Carl's into family, it. They did it. And that'll, here's what they did on their private land. On their so private land, yeah. You can we do it on private land, it's but if you... Yeah, I think it's a well, state statute. I printed out the most updated version of the cemetery rules for bulls and sea slime. 
I only like got a small blurb in there, but I'll, I'll look at it again and see if it leads me to a statue, and then I can understand that. So I made a note for yeah. Ariel. Uh, but, anyway, but, but I just invite your comments, even if there's no designated. space available, yeah, so even in a designated area within our yeah. current property. Yeah. So. But, all right, well, we'll I'll scope it out and see what I can find. So I know the, and then we'll right, talk thank about Thank you, Cecil. Thanks, thank Cecil. I'm, I'm glad you're back. Well, I'm glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. How much did you drive you to? <laughs> so public comment, I guess, here. All, All right, well, we sent the, we sent the bill to- We'll uh, now open it up for public comment. So if there's anybody, there's currently nobody here um, in the audience. So if there's anybody that wants to speak now. Mr. Whalen? We have Ellie or Christy, anything for public comment? Don't tell everybody. Um, nothing from me. Thanks, Ellie. Christy, anything for you? Thanks, Thanks everybody. Um, what's, what's all that ruckus in there? My goodness. For so many people. <laughs> hey, I'd like public comment on the record that I'm tired of the humidity. Thank you. That's all I have to say. <laughs> we'll get right on that. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Do, we'll do what we can about that. <laughs> I'm setting up the new weather machine right now. At least you're not here. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's brutal down here. Yeah, there's no air conditioning in this old building. Paul made the right. <laughs> hey, I grew up in a Grange Hall my whole childhood, so I, I you don't have oh. to tell me. Woo! I bet. All right, so hearing no public comment, we will move on. We had the um, we had the generator bid um, and the waste water pump bids that um, Teresa kind of told us last time. And it looked like pretty much that the um, the individuals that had given us some budgetary prices on it ended up being cheaper on them. Um, and this was part of the uh, ARPA yeah. uh, money that we had planned on using. So the good news is you can accept the money into the general fund. So you've accepted the money by saying that it's a, a uh, revenue replacement. So um, it kind of helps you with the procurement rules. However, that being said, we have stuck to the rules. We put it out on the state bid site so that you can open it up to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I had written to VLCT to see if American Iron and Steel came into play, which luckily it did not. So, um, so yeah, and then it, and it kind of worked out too because uh, it's funny as as things do because I truly believe that Tim Mills is still pulling the strings no matter what I think I'm doing because he had met with Yankee Generator had a relationship with them and they were part of the bid and we'd gotten some information to figure out how to come about this and he met with Laramie Water Resources is still Laramie he'd come as a recommendation from. Um, Aldrich and Elliot. So mm -hmm. we went through the whole public process, and then they ended up being the uh, the, the low bidders. So I thought, well, I'm still at it. And I, I mean, I know I know this was kind of the the one piece of the ARPA yeah. money that we kind of had agreed early on in the process that we were looking towards. Yeah, uh, I mean, taking advantage of that money towards this infrastructure. So yeah. I mean, this is going to save the utility users a lot of money and these are 40 year replacements i mean in the pumps richard keeps saying are we getting ordered the pumps yet because you know every 16 18 months we're rebuilding one mm. so the good news is too is our other employee at the wastewater plant clayton whitmarsh um, is familiar with these pumps and that's what he runs in heartland and we uh, richard went down and met with him and um, good news is you may actually get a chance to meet Clayton because he's going to cover a week's vacation for Richard. And uh, so it's also nice to have someone, and he's a certified level five. Heartland's mm -hmm. a big plant. So it was nice that he's Hartford. familiar, Hartford, not Hartland, yes, excuse me, Hartford, that he's familiar with the pumps. So that was nice too. And Richard's kind of kept him in the loop as we've gone along. So um, so I would make a question. Yep. The, the bid results for the genetic. The gener oh, I see is generator versus pumps. Yeah. Yep. I'm looking at a hundred thousand dollar difference and yeah. I'm saying, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, no, no, sorry. Okay, yeah. okay, I got yeah, it. So the first one was the I read it that time. Replace the diesel it. generator and the other one was for the pumps. Okay. So um so I would just entertain a motion to 
award the bids to Yankee Generator and Laramie Water Resources per the bid sheet. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. How long did you say it was gonna to take to give that stuff? A couple of months? Well, at least, uh, I think he, the generator bid said it was at least 20 weeks out. Yeah. And that was a, a while ago. So that was a month ago, I guess, or not quite a month with okay. bids, but. Um, That's good. So this will roll into our um, rest of our American Rescue Plan spending. I know we talked about finalizing this in mm -hmm. September. And so I did a little math for you here saying, this is what we ha are gonna be awarded. This is our generator minus our wastewater pumps and our balance. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm still, I would still like to see 20,000 of it go towards reduction of the purchase of the Western Star so that it helps that capital fund because we have a lot of equipment need. I'd also like to see the rest of it put into roads, gravel roads, so that we can you know, make some headway, do similar what, do exactly, not similar, do exactly what we did after uh, the April 2019 flood, divide the town into quadrants, have AJ and Morgan, uh, Ryan Slack and, and you know, work on the sections that we know are bad, that we know need to be done and have them done and material brought in. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's, it's a boon for us, this kind of money. And um, we also have some matching money for the Sand Hill We do. Project. And now that I've attend, attended that class or that webinar, the 20% that we, that you, it was originally a 600,000 here you go, nothing. Then it made it through the federal government. Now we have a 20% match. However, money that we use from the DWSRF fund, not all of that's federal money. So any portion that we get that's non-federal can go towards buying down our, um, our match on that. Mm -hmm. um, plus the draft um, plan, IUP plan came out. They divided our project into two funds one for 850,000 and with 425,000 of forgiveness and 850 and 425 forgiveness. And then the other portion, which is the pump station, Crystal Drive, that where they didn't give us any um, disadvantage subsidy, where they gave us 425,000 on the other. So Wayne Elliott and I emailed today and I asked Wayne, he's gonna make a comment to them and say, wait a second. Where's our, where's Bethel's subsidy on that? And then we're gonna to try to <clears throat> figure out a timeline. Where's forward. the Bennington okay. amendment from last time? Well, yeah, we know. finally whittled down. Well, it was funny, he did ask me if I'm I finally supposed to get got, us that money this if time. If I got around. the final loan documents yeah. and I finally did, they'd given us a little more money. So um, anyway, so we're still waiting to see you know how that's going to play out but um but yeah so there's money to go in the roads and yes there's matching funds all over the place so it's definitely i talked to ryan slack and i need to talk to him again about working on a, a detailed capital road plan because that's why i started with we have this list of grants now which is helpful it shows us where our match is coming you know mm -hmm. what our match is so but it's also a lot of funding so anyways i just uh want to make my plug one more time for american rescue plan yep. spending i'd like to make a comment about what we need to do on our road hang on one second christy okay dave uh the uh what i call the fay hill road a hill right off the uh pond was very was has two different types of material on the surface of the road. Okay. And when we had that dry spell, the, uh, the stuff that came, I think that came out of Brookfield or somewhere, which was a, like a hard pack type material. So and it would have rest, come from like Randolph Center from yeah, the quarry, yeah. Yeah, and then the, the rest of the road was uh, a gravel, crushed gravel. Now after that hot spell, the, the uh, crushed stone, still good and hard in there and the crushed gravel the vines were going up in smoke and um, it got rough really fast and it was it was just trashed yeah so i think we want to really when we start putting money into gravel or whatever i think it needs to be put into something we need to look at the material we're using yeah that's a good idea because um you're right the road, get the better stayed, quality. the road stayed where that hard pack was where the, and that's where the, the gravel that was, came it, from it was Tucker's. Yeah. That's the stuff that came from Tucker's. And, and that's the challenge is the uh, crushed material 
that is mine typically ends up being a better overall product, except for you can get into wear and tear issues with tires and things like that because it's sharp and angulated, mm -hmm. where gravel stone is less fractured, so it's rounder. Um, so it's easier on car tires, but what happens is that kind of moves out of the road because it doesn't have the angulation. And, and you, so you're kind of like, so it's, it's like a catch 22 there. We, right? have, a, we have one driver on our hill that uh, likes to spin his tires everywhere. Yeah. And he did, he's, I mean, it's so washboardy. I mean, that truck out there, five miles an hour is all I can do to stay in the cab. Yeah. Now, the other part of the road, I can go and speed him. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it makes a point looking yeah. at. No, I think so too. Definitely. You know, no. Quality material to put out there. So, Christy, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, don't apologize. I, I just, I just had a clarifying question. The monies you keep referring to is that the American Rescue Plan monies you keep saying you're trying to spend down, and is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Yep. We're talking about American yeah. Rescue Plan. Money. Yep. Got it. I just wanted to make sure I understood. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so I feel like my my take on this money, and I know we're not making this decision, but no, we said we wait till September. Um, but yeah, but I I agree with Therese on you know pushing a bunch of that into things that we know we we're going to spend that money like gravel roads and some of these upgrades. I think that you know even left with four hundred twenty thousand, that's still a, a fair chunk of change that we could pick off some really nice ones on here that also I think will make elements of the community feel good and feel attended to, which is important. And so I, I'd like to sort of maybe see a version of this and Teresa, I'd, I'd even be happy to work with you on it if it's like, and I'm just, I'm gonna name random ones just because they're what I can see, yeah, but like sure. a website upgrades, 5,000. That's an, that's an easy one to pick up. The, yeah. pick up the 20,000 towards the new Western star down payment, things like that, that we just pick off a handful right. that are these smaller ones, and yeah. then what, what's left then goes into some of those bigger known continuous maintenance, like yeah, or like capital and, plans. and yeah. things, and then kind of play with it from there. And because so I can't, like, I mean, upgrade to the pool, you're probably looking at easily 150 grand, if not more. I mean, and that's just without getting all the big estimates. And I, you know, repairing sidewalks, that's just such a vague notion that I, I, you know, I'm just waiting for better connections to finish because everybody keeps saying once better connection finishes, then we're going to be open for some grant money that we will qualify for that, you know, we don't, you know, now, and, and we don't even budget sidewalk repair. Yeah, very likely budget. sidewalks because of accessibility issues. Yeah. Be in that. Is there... Is there a reason we have to make the decision by September? Like, could we sit on some of this for a while to wait to see what better connections you could. finishes and what opens sure. up? Yeah, you can. There's, you don't have to. Well, you have to, I say it. You have to obligate it by, I think it's 2024 and spend it by 2026. Okay. But so certainly, time. if we're going to make a commitment into the roads, we need, you know, you probably okay. want 320000 to, if you're going to get anywhere, you know, right. we're getting roads done. I mean, Chris, we just did a, you know, Christian Hill, and that was a high estimate. And we just got, a, I just got a letter today. We did get our bike ped grant to do that sidewalk. Oh, nice. And that's from Giffords to the school. Yeah. That's 425000 yeah. So, frankly, much less than this isn't going to get us probably as far on the gravel roads as we need. Do I think that, yeah, we could pick off 20,000 worth of other stuff? Probably sure. But, and yes, of course you could reserve it for a little bit longer. Right. Um, I also, for us too, we just want to make a plan moving into winter. If we're going to, you know, then the guys can say, okay, we're out. Where's the real trouble spots? What are we going to hit? What are we going to repair? And what well, are we going to do? Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. The priciest potential from the Better Connections grant is sidewalks uh -huh. right exactly. here in town. Yeah. And that may be a place that. And part of it is we need to start budgeting for sidewalk maintenance and repair. We don't. When I came to Bethany, right. budget $1,000. I wasn't going to force where for That grant. would be sidewalk replacement. And that's a whole different <laughs> ball of wax, kettle yeah. of fish. So, yeah. anyway, that's. Yeah. And, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's definitely something I think that we, my plan is to put money into the budget this year to start for, for sidewalks. I mean, we have to, we have to start yep. somewhere and um, we always just can't rely on a grant all the time to get, you know, I can write them. And, and I think we look at this list, you know, kind of like, like Lindley was saying, like, regardless if we pick some of these off now or later, 
I think this is, you know, the list of priorities here is probably things that we're going to do with our town. It's just a matter of when, right? It's, yep. you know, so, you know, we may use some ARPA money to do the website now, or maybe we dump it into the road and then we come up with our own money yeah, next year to exactly. put a website. Like either way, we're yeah. probably going to, yeah. it, it seems like most of the, most of the ideas that have hit the sheet are things that we kind of some way or another think that need to happen yeah. just going to be yeah and i'm hoping with volrec and better connections that maybe some of that signage mm -hmm. money that they're going to design will i don't know if we're going to get that money you know i don't know i don't know yet what we're going to get to people from after better connections people just keep telling me we're going to be eligible for money we you know after better connections but nobody i don't know what that is so they don't know either. exactly that's <laughs> darn it, 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 and, so, uh, it, they still have not narrowed it down to specific we were recommending yeah. x y and z yeah so, I, so I mean, uh, they're about ready to do that yeah. but they're still wanting to make sure that the pe the key players including the select board yeah because uh, our last steering committee meeting, I had a planning commission meeting, so I right. couldn't go to steering. And then I got an email today from Nicole with a schedule to see about myself and Richard <laughs> and um, possibly Morgan getting together with Paul and Jean and, um, you know, to look at the slide presentation, which obviously I forwarded to all of you about the big ideas. And um, right. so, so they said there'll be a better explanation that goes with that. And, and um so, so, we'll, so yes, I, I'm aware right. of that. Right. The, the, the slide presentation doesn't make sense without, yeah, kind of, yeah, without somebody talking about that. Right. That kind of makes sense. And then, so, and yeah, we just have to, so we'll get, just with the ARPA money, we just have to be careful right now because we have, you know, four, we'll call, I'll say four major projects that we have monies appropriated to already. So now it's not a point of, are we going to do them it's we do have it and we have to do it within yeah. the next year right so where does bethel's mm -hmm. match come from right yeah, not talking. just bethel's match but unfortunately a lot of estimates on projects have now been exceeded with energy prices and things like that so um yep i think we really have to be careful that yeah what we do spend on anything other than some of that matching money right now because one way or another we're going to have to do that project now it's either we're going to lose the grant which the last thing everyone do is give the grant back because then next time they're going to be like, well, we're not going to give, yeah, yeah, and give you a grant. Like, yeah. And I'd hate to be in a position where we go and not, uh, none of these are bad ideas, but yeah. I'd hate to be in a position where we go and spend money on these things. And then we have to go to the voters and say, we need a quarter million dollars to fund our pieces of these four right. large projects that we, you know, the sidewalk, the water, mm -hmm. the um, Sand Hill and Christian Hill projects when we could have, you know, okay. and so avoided some of, that. And some of them we can't. So some of that right. money can't be used as a match, but we can fill in the gap of something else. Well, it could where, be, again, it could be that project that we think is 700,000 could turn into yeah. 850 or something now that yeah. prices are more expensive or, True. Uh, you know, the cost of pipes up or you yeah, know, know. whatever. But uh, no, no. I would no, just say right. when we do this, we probably should yep. not just get this list together, but get the list of our obligations that we have with our grants and what those matches are. Yeah. Which is this that I gave you. So I will add that. I made a note right. to add the matching grant funds on here. I'll also have to see which can we can match with our fund, which we can't. Because all, all four of those projects we're talking about have to get done like in the next or would be getting done in the next two years, right? Yeah, I mean, we've got a lot. quite of, a bit of projects in two years that we're going to have to take. Because we've got so. two, yeah, two haven't waiting for grant agreement, yeah. And one, of course, well, the, the BOREC, which is not, you know, doesn't cost us anything on that. Right. Thank God. Not to mention, you don't want to do them all at the same time because at least two of them are going to be in the same location of the village, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Pleasant Street sidewalks and Sand Hill, you wouldn't want to be doing all that at the same time because you're inconveniencing 
you yeah. know, you the, don't want to everybody off simultaneously. Oh, let's just do them all at the same time. Actually, if we could, if we could just yeah. the week school starts. Yeah. yeah. All Even better. Yeah. We'll just get the buses <laughs> backed up down through village. Even better. So we, I would just say we, when we do make this, we just got to sit down and. Yep. I think it's the ARPA money, looking at our budget that we're getting ready to set and whatever those match pieces are. Yeah, that we're gonna I, look at. I made a note to add the matching money so, there. So the yeah, that would be helpful. It, it didn't even because they were in such different places in the pack of my brain didn't put yeah. them together even though you i think yeah. you said it in your report no, yeah, I'm uh, not sure you know, we, so we'll, we'll use these matches but my my brain still didn't connect all the i mean and it's great time. i mean that we have secured yeah you know yeah. some the four projects that most towns are probably lucky if you could do one of those not alone four of them you know uh, yeah i mean we, so are, we have yeah. the opportunity to get stuff done it's now we're we just got to make sure we can yeah. pitch our match too, right? Yeah, because we're at so. one point two, and then we add this other four, so we're at one point six. Just that we've secured just in transportation wow. right. grants alone. Because we had we, talked about this next waterline project. Yeah. You know, may have to. You know, we'll have to look at. Yeah, we're looking. What piece goes on the service? riders versus what may have to be on the general on the general you know it depends on the package as well so it does it depends on that and that's why i keep one of my email today to, wait. So we yeah. to meet to talk about the timeline and i had just gotten uh when tim was out with his um hip surgery he had got notes on the plans so i don't know how far he'd gotten through but i was able to get those plans mm -hmm. to mike Maynard. so mike so now mike wayne Richard and I all need to sit down and kind of understand the project because we were considering a bond vote, you know, um, in November, but we can't do that. If now we would be lucky if we get a bond vote in March. But well, I did hear that they're there's waiting for the draft on water line stuff, water services stuff, like the, with um, some of the the extension of the, I don't want to say the extension of the T bill, but that piece that's coming, there's some 90 10 money that's in there yeah. with water that. I don't know if that project would qualify for 9010 money, but yeah, we'll find out. you know, I know there's some of that stuff that's coming. But again, it's first right. come, first serve, you know. And that's or why Bennington will get it if we're not hurry up. And that's <laughs> well, that's why we made the right decision to yeah. move with to full design. I mean, we're I think we're at 85 percent design or more now. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, so we'll see. Like I said, I just had that you know, conversation with Wayne today. Okay. <laughs> so we had <clears throat> Ellie was going to move her um, coin drop. Does that sound right, Ellie? Yeah, um, we, there, there was a funeral being uh, being held at the Brick Church at the same time. Plus, they were going to do um, uh, uh, some program at the town hall. So, so all that tra funeral traffic, we didn't want to interrupt because um, it was um, Peter Hart, uh, a fire person, and so. Okay. So we just want to postpone, we postponed until this coming Saturday. Same place, same time, 8 to 12. That was very nice. So you guys. Anybody on the board have any issues with that? Move we approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Probably guaranteed to be a heck of a lot cooler, Ellie. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Thanks for improving the weather for us. Yeah. Well, at least it's supposed to be cooler. I'll believe it when we see it. This one right here? Yep. You have to date it to it. Yeah. All right. Uh, energy committee's request to fundraise at Bethel Energy Show. So I talked to, emailed Nicole after I talked to you, and she said they're, they're not, they do not have any specific fundraising plans they just want to be able to accept donations because she had written to me i'd sent her the fundraising policy which said they can't do any fundraising without permission from the select board so what they are looking for is permission to basically solicit donations and then the donations will go... be used as she explained in email providing incentives and things like that but i guess the only... so whatever she gets now will be I told send her, back out to this Bethel Energy. Well, I'm just, I, I just don't want them to get in a situation where they, I don't know, I'll make it up. They get $5,000 donated and then we cross budgets and then the I, money. 
Yes. And if the money's not spent by June 30th, then. And I was very specific about that. that I said, you yeah. can, but you don't, you have to spend it by June 30, 2023. She right. was like, okay, I'm not okay. sure she's expecting a lot, but she just wants to basically use it for providing incentives. And um, yeah, right. so which is nice. Does anybody on the board have any issues with the energy committee collecting donations? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, then just a motion to authorize myself to sign all necessary closing documents and re related to the Bethel Royalton transfer station. So moved. Second. <laughs> David was quick on the draw it. there. Yeah, it was going to be quick on the draw. Faster. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm not sure exactly what there will be if there's going to be a purchase and sale or what but because this is the information this is what our lawyer drafted but then Royalton's lawyer was drafting something and he needed to get it to Bob Fletcher and then Bob needed to review it but their lawyer was on vacation so it's kind of a little bit of that and so anyways so we're all aware of the deal and what the deal is so no, no changes okay. <laughs> all righty I may, I may have completely. I, did, because I didn't have it for you yet. What the ditching? Part? Yeah. Okay. Because Cause I was looking. I'm like, I don't have anything here. That's why I didn't put the name in well, because uh, I had done because I was going to be off on third part of Thursday and Friday. I hadn't we I hadn't done the tabulation yet. So the motion to award the Grant and Age ditching project on Christian Hill will go to W. B. Rogers. And was that that was all inside of? The grant and budget yeah. for that. Yeah, actually, there we the the bid came in and it's and we have more money on the table. So I reached out to Rita and said, "Uh, hey now, what else can we do up there to I know because these are those hydrologically connected right. segments. So, um, her and I need to meet to see. I want to see if we can extend go further or do another piece in the same area." Yeah got to look at our um book and talk to Rita because I said I don't want to leave this money on the table so <clears throat> anyway so WB Rogers was the low bidder okay so just need a motion to award to WB Rogers so moved second okay moved second by Dave all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. all right and then I I think everybody had saw there that there was some vandalism that was done at the shooting range. And so, and Dave Griffin is at September 1st, he's resigning. We did put that out on Front Porch Forum and <clears throat> Facebook, I think. And yeah. so we've had two people so far that had, you know, that may be interested and it would be nice if we could get a few people interested because it's a lot for one person to do. We were very, very lucky with Dick Adams. And the minute somebody shot, he got in his truck and came down. And, you know, not everybody can do that. And so, and there's been, unfortunately, since Dave has been there, there's been, this is not our first vandalism. And people are still shooting shotguns despite the signage, despite the rules. Then somebody did this. They were standing maybe 10 feet away with a nine millimeter and just did this just until that thing just broke down. And Dave and his brother Skip were there and they said, what do you want to do? I said, leave it, just leave it alone. Just leave it down and see how many people come to shoot and see that this is it. Maybe they'll call the office and we can get them to volunteer their time. And I think that Dave and Skip maybe left it down for a couple of days, but um, then they went down and, and repaired it. But um, you know, this isn't it. Their their people are <laughs> leaving trash. They're shooting shotguns. They're vandalizing. You know, trying to take any donation money or anything that's you know that's there. And Dave had wanted to build something else before he got done in September. And um, I, you know, I, God bless you. You know, but he's just really you know frustrated by it and. Part of me was like, just close it. But frankly, we can't because we can't enforce it to be closed. Right. We could tear everything down, but people are still going to go there and shoot. But um, I did ask Oscar to, if he's there to drive by more. And I did 
make a police report, um, which I gave you the information about, and then Oscar gave me a case number. But mm. you know, my mother used to say that you can't have anything nice. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it's frustrating. Well, again, it's and I don't know how we're going to stop it without. I think the tough thing is there's to, to police it. You know, there's there's a fair amount of people that use the facility. Yes, they're great. Just like anything in our lives, that there's always that one few apple. that ruin it for everybody. And I think I think we ought to to uh, have a hearing on whether or not to continue maintaining and providing a shooting range. I love to see what comes and see what comes. I mean, people come and we say yeah, this is what. Well, this is what we've experienced and we need help. And that's what happened before, I think, is that came up and we did do that. And that's how Dick Adams came to light. And right. he was the one who took it over. And I think in the beginning, more people had offered help. And then, of course, they, they didn't. So it might not be a bad idea. To it, I mean, seems, don't get people riled up. But no, what, no, it gets the people who are interested, interested in having it here. Right. And we can say, look, all right. Now, we well, can't, it, we need help. If it's paired with a hearing or not, you know, one way is kind of what Chris was saying is like, put it out publicly, like it could be front porch forum and Facebook and all of that, but even a sign that's right there so that users see it at like, help us keep this, you know, and, and outline what, you know, what you can think of, like, this will go away unless you are responsible. Right. And, you know, and then the rules are underneath it. And all. And the, the rules are posted clear as well, day they're out. That's obvious, but it's also the, like, kind of dangle the, this could go away yeah. if you're not could responsible. Do that. I could put something out on Front Porch Forum and, um, and Facebook and just openly discuss and post a picture of the vandalism and just say, these are what's going on. Someone is there. Uh, the gentleman who's been graciously taking care of it is no longer, you know, September's not going to do that. And if you don't want this to go away, we need people to police it and use it responsibly. Right. And maybe even kind of hold each other responsible when they're there. If they see something happening, then it kind of gives them the permission. I'm not sure if I... You, you don't want to play guy, with the guy with the gun? No, the guy <laughs> that's doing that, I'm not sure I want to walk up to him and say, hey, quit that, and he's got a loaded nine mil there. Right. That's that, that's, I'm not sure that yeah. I want to be the guy that goes up and tells him. Eee. It's it's true, and and um, I'll you take know, my forty, and then maybe we'll go. It's a valid point. Um, I, I got thinking of that when I was when you had told me about it there, mm, what two awesome, weeks ago yeah. when it happened or whatever. I mean, it kind of segues into the constable discussion a little it's bit true. with you know, not not to say that this stuff couldn't or wouldn't happen even if we had a constable here for the 20 hours a week that we promised people but you know we do have the you know what we promised versus what we're getting for service right yeah. and and we know how you know m most of how law enforcement works is is being out there visible as a deterrent right and i think i mean how often do we see nothing against the two constables but how often do we see the constable, right? Yeah. Like, if you're a local person, you know at this point, not very often, yeah. right? And so, so you will see some of this content. stuff. You'll start to see some of this stuff, yeah. like bridge graffiti and this stuff and things yeah. popping up again because yeah. people think that, oh, well, I'll never see that, so I can do that. P. Vine Park um, was vandalized. They broke the yeah. top finial, maybe? I'm not sure that's the right word, but off the top and they, in the floor, um, they the gazebo? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So I mean um, maybe they're related, who knows? But it's okay, like maybe not. You know how it is. Like anytime, you know, there's a shift like that, you know, yeah. people are gonna take advantage Cats of that, away, right? the I mean, supply. Yeah. So I kind of got thinking like, well, the first thing came to mind is, you know, maybe half the time I hear the gunshots from my house. Like maybe I should just drive down once in a while and see who's doing it, you know, because I've always just assumed that somebody was doing that anyway. So yeah. But but then the other piece is me. It just angers me because my girls and I, we go down there maybe once a year to do some target practices. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'd hate for a few bad eggs to ruin it for everybody um, because there's yeah. not a lot of places to go do that safely. No. And, and, I, and yeah. what happens in, in the argument that was made last time was the argument to keep it in town was, 
you know, to adopt a safe location for people to do it rather than people doing it maybe in a not so safe location at home. Right. Sure. I mean, um, so, but yeah, it's, it's pretty unfortunate that people need to go and do things like that. But I think we're starting to see some small stuff pick up, you know, that we had seen in the last couple of years. Like security cameras. So, well, we talked about that and there's not really a great place down there. And then when we, you know, we had some signage up, um, Dave had experienced the day he was there, there was two people and they climbed all over the woods and the bank mess up. They were trying, they wanted to find them. And they're also shooting so they could shoot them out. I mean, we still talk about it. But no, but it's interesting. They were, they went out looking for them because there was a sign there that said, you know, it, but I asked Morgan about it and he said he was very happy when the town said no more shotguns because he said we used to hear BBs on the roof of the town yeah. garage and he, said, shotguns are an issue. and he said if people are down back shooting he goes as employees of the town we're not hanging out out back he goes yeah. we're kind of staying near the front of the shop and yeah. uh, but if that's what you want I'm happy to put a front porch forum post Facebook post and let yeah. people know publicly yeah. about yeah. it and do you want to add it to an, a future agenda item yeah. no I like I like Lindley's approach of Let's at, th at least this step, let's put it out there and say, did you know this is what happened out there? And, yeah. you know, it's almost it's, a little bit of public shame. Yeah, like not absolutely. The person who did it, but just saying, like, if this continues, this amenity will go away. Right. Here's what you're risking. You're for your moment of fun. You could ruin the whole thing. OK, so do you don't want it on an agenda yet? No, but I think if we get it out but there I in like, front of the public of Gene's yeah. right. I th I like Gene's idea too. Is let's see what this does. And we may have to yeah, like if that continues, we have to Jean's revisit right. the whole it thing. Maybe a once in a lifetime event. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, well, they, they've done it, yeah. So <laughs> listen, I think Gene's stop playing. And I'll tell you right now, Mister, they'll come out in droves. Yeah. So and yeah. but it's not a bad thing. I think Gene is right. Yeah, so if this if this fine. doesn't get their attention. And remind them of the rules. I, yeah, no, I agree. And then you got to cap it. Then you can say, okay, well, what are you going to do about it? You can sit here and complain to us. We don't have the staff to do it. So we yeah. did this a few years ago. I think Chris was yeah. on the board then. We had one select person who was really animate about shutting it down completely. And we had a hearing and had, I don't think we had more than three or four people that came in uh, to support keeping it open. Really? That was, back, that was back when I first got on the board. Yeah, I that remember that. Before amendment, the second amendment started. I think at that time we had adjusted some hours, Paul, didn't we? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Dick was Dick was keeping an eye on things, but this particular one of you know particular select person was very animate about having. It was right around the time of some of the school shootings, and there was a heightened awareness of of that. I think the first thing is if we get that out publicly, sure. individuals that do want to take advantage of that site may have a new yep. renowned sense and kind of repost going the out there and, and doing redirect people some to supervising come. on their own time. And we are looking for somebody. Yeah, to and we have put yeah. that out, and but we'll do it again and this time. I mean, Adams is great because he would run right out there as soon as he heard oh. the first shot, and he'd go right out there to find Dick. Because I don't know how many times you know I'd have the girls there or something, and he'd come down and be all happy to see them. Oh you know? yeah. He's but, Oh, well, he's a great guy. Um, but yeah, so all right, we'll do that. And then the last piece, so we had talked about that sometime around budget season or just prior to that, that we'd start the conversation of, you know, comp, basically this is a budget oriented discussion on what do we do with the constable, police, whatever. Um, so rather than get too far ahead of ourselves, I wanted to break this down over like several steps rather than just have a lot of people in here at the board level. I'd like to, I was, um, find my notes here. I was thinking more at this point at the, at our level is, and then we can get good public buy-in would be, you know, what I'd like to get at tonight is what are our options currently? So, and if we could lay out, make it up here are our, four or five options that we have. And we, if uh, as a board, we can lay those options out there, then we can start to have a discussion on 
does this option work? Does this one not work? You know, can we afford it? Can we not afford it? Does it fit into what we want to do here in the community or not? So, um, so I guess what I wanted to get on the board tonight is entries because Teresa has been doing some notes as well as, you know, what, what currently our, our, our options when it comes to our constable, obviously the first option is we can leave it the way it is, right? Uh, we have a uh, two temp constables that give us time yep. whenever they can, which right now is rare. I don't know, nine hours of pay period. If we're lucky, you know, yeah. so it's rarity. Um, and these are just my notes, and feel free to jump in. The other option I had come up with is, like we talked about the budget session last October, November was finding a full time person. Yeah. Um, because there's been difficulty with hiring part-time people because of wage benefits or need elsewhere. In order to attract somebody, maybe we need to hire somebody full-time. Um, uh, there's always the option, of, say it's a, a popular one, there's always the option of having a police department. Um, just throwing things against the wall, yeah. option-wise. And then, then like we had talked about the last couple of years is there's the out, source so we could outsource our community policing to the sheriff's department or the state police or another identity yep um so i guess what i wanted to do just kind of with the board member tonight is let's be nice let's just formalize a an option sheet that we feel are realistic options for our community and then we could start getting some feedback both at budget season and and community members can put in their input on, you know, full-time individual versus part-time or It'll also how help. they feel about a police department or- It'll also or, help me do some research. I think the fifth option is no, no coverage. Right, oh yeah. There yeah. is an option of you do nothing, you know, which sometimes we hear that, which is the VSP is right down the street, but we also know the VSP is short staffed shorter than we are, you know? Um, so, and yeah. now when we've looked at outsourcing before, those have been significantly more expensive options yeah. with less for the town, right? Like, get yeah, less coverage for the town and less that they are willing to do that currently our principal does, right? So there's there's sort of that weight of there is more expensive, and we're actually getting less for our money, right? But yeah, yeah we're so getting nothing say, now. <laughs> this this will probably co cost you X if we can provide the service, right? Sure. And then, like, yeah. there's no commitment behind like we'll even be able to do this, but right? If we can, it's going to be X Y Z. I right? I did talk to Frank Severy. He's on the select board in Rochester, and they currently contract with Windsor County Sheriff's Office, and he's been they've been happy with them. They pay. I think they pay about 28,000, 30,000 a year and they get a specific amount of coverage and they will do more than just traffic enforcement. They will do, if they're in your town for whatever, 20 hours a week or 12 hours a week, they will do what you need them to do. Um, whether it's uh, do a welfare check or do, you know, um, something else, they, they will do those. Then verifications probably look at, you know, drug issues or report to BSP, that sort of thing. Like we would have oh, to have yeah. our own animal control. So officer. if we went to no coverage, then you would have to do an yeah. animal, so you'd have, have to appoint an uh, animal have to control. Hire, we, uh, person, we had a dog right? warden. Right. So you'd need a, a dog warden. Will any of those options will require a dog work? Oh, right. Yeah. Maybe unless you stay. Constable, right? If you contract right. if you out. Outsourced it. Yep. Yeah. So nothing, you need a dog warden and the contract out, you'd need a dog warden. Yeah. Does the dog warden, would that cover, is that animal control? Because I know sometimes. It depends on your ordinance. Dogs it, it, right. it depends on your ordinance. If you just deal with dogs, which is all you should be dealing with, then it's just a dog warden. Yeah. Because people can take you know, care cats to the Humane Society or whatever. If it's a raccoon, a skunk, a this or that, you'd call the state police and deal with the game warden. So, okay. um, but, so yeah, so you're right. So I added that. You need a dog warden for your VSP option or your no option. And you said start a PD was one of your options, right? 
Well, yeah, yeah but yeah, I mean, okay. I, I just threw it out there. I just want to make sure. I, I mean, again, it. PD doesn't necessarily no. mean you have six cops. No, no, like that, no. But Rand yeah. Randolph was another place that lived in the police department and went to Orange, Orange County. County Sheriff's. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm going to be interested to know if they, what their, you know, has any, I don't know what, I don't they know have what their coverage. Experience. I don't know what their yeah, 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 following that, but yeah. that's another place. Yeah, I'm making home. Of course, I, I guess the first option when I said stay as we are, I guess maybe is two options because we see. currently are not where we want to be, right? So I guess our stay. our current option was really 20 hours a week part-time person that we can't find someone to do 20 hours a week. And and we are currently at, you know, two part-time people with very limited exposure right. exactly so yeah i said either hire a full-time person or hire a part-time person or two people which is kind of our stay yeah. the same option and, and i know you know a lot of things could change i mean i know the you know the elections for the sheriffs will be happening so yeah. potentially depending on who gets on or off there can always be you know new proposals on how someone wants to you know do something but mm -hmm. um I think that if you were going to, you know, you could contract out. I mean, our current year budget is 40,000, 41,000. You could contract out for 41,000 with either VSP or the sheriff and get about what you're getting now. Maybe, oh yeah, maybe maybe a little more. For a lot more. Okay, for with the sheriff's a little more. Yes, yeah, right, exactly. The good news is about contracting it out is as we're in a pickle now, people on mandatory overtime, they can't help us. So we actually would be a priority for somebody. And somebody's out for surgery, somebody's out for, we have no one to cover. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we contract it out, that's their problem. They have agreed to provide us with this coverage and we're guaranteed that coverage. That's the thing we can't do now. Mm -hmm. And if you hired one full-time person, you're not doing that for 40,000 a year. Um, no, I'd heard the estimates on that. You probably need to budget like eighty to a hundred thousand a year when you count benefits. That's what I was thinking. If you went full time, and that's one person, so that means they'd have a varied schedule. You wouldn't have twenty four seven coverage, of course. Um, but oh yeah, you'd be. And I, that would be what you would call a full time constable. Yeah. You know, they would probably have credentials of more so than that. I think that this is the direction it needs to go, but I feel like even though you just did this only a year or maybe a year and a half ago, yeah. is it worth getting the numbers from both the oh, sheriffs sure. and VSP? Just to do this comparison, I feel like. Yeah, I can also do a salary survey, to, but I think Chris is right. We'd be looking at 80 to 100 a year with Benny's for one person. Right. But then I think we have to understand the reality of our situation is. Make it up. Let's say we decided to go to a full time individual. Will we even be able to attract a full time individual? Because, like, all the agencies around us are shorthanded, you know, and they're all paying probably more and have more resources than we do. And it's challenging, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. Let's say we wanted to go full time. Is that even realistic at this point? You it's know? true. And you, you, uh, you know, you're talking about. You're right. As far as we don't have a lot of equipment, we've relied on these people using right. equipment from their other positions. Whereas, you know, if you contract it out, obviously, if it's, they have to, if their car isn't working, if they're, you know, they're doing providing the training. They're also the rules too. You know, that's police are tricky business in the sense that you know, a lot of things can go wrong quickly, and it's. And it's a lot of liability for the town where if you are contracting that out, then that entity is the one responsible for use of force policies and, and right. making sure that everything is current and that person All the is, trainings yeah, and it's up to date on their standards. Right. I mean, my personal preference is that we was, would be that we contract it out because all of those things that are beyond our purview to figure out, are, are they the most up-to-date on this? Do they understand the- Are they being paid competitive? Right, are they, are they getting the proper community policing training that, that we need them to have? If they come from a bigger agency like the VSP or the Sheriff's Office, mm -hmm. 
they're getting that training because you know they're in a larger group than than us trying to you know to figure. So we had out. the four, we had uh, five yeah. options. Yep. We're currently in a situation where we say we can't find anybody part time. When's the last time we looked? Well, because uh, we're, we're currently experiencing dissatisfaction with our current situation. Only ours, yes. Well, we're not we're not we're getting what we had hoped to receive exactly. for the dollars available. So, to my question, the follow up question is: How hard have we tried to find something, somebody? to do what we need done. Not at all. I have right. I mean, class. that's, uh, I'm not sh right. Mm -hmm. and, and because until what last year we were getting, Oscar was doing more. Well, it's been two years, I forget. It's well, been a couple it's, of years. It's been, even, it's, I mean, even when we were, we had the position open, we struggled to get people to apply, and that was before the current shortage. So I think that if, you know, Justin is on mandatory overtime, I think that the reality is, you may be absolutely right. I just right. Want, he's right. I want to right. raise it's the a question. Point. We haven't actually looked, but we also, you know, having the finger on the pulse of what's happening around the state and have a good idea that it's not mm -hmm. as likely. It doesn't yeah. mean it's not impossible. And, and you might attract somebody who to take a full-time position who's come from a bigger agency that maybe is just sick of it and wants to come to a Smaller agency, but to me, that still that still is a big burden for the town because, again, it's making sure these policies and their training and everything is where, you know, I feel like if you contract out, you're well, I mean, basically the, mitigating your liability. You're transferring your liability. Yeah. I mean, a lot of reason why our well, we call it a police department, but our constable budget has pretty much doubled in the past like five or six years is because of the amount of um, red tape that comes along with the position now, the trainings, the, you know, yeah. the extra time for documentation or going to court for, you know, so that's why, I mean, that's kind of where the 20 hours was, it, you know, it used to be, you know, 10, 15, then turn to 20 and you're not really getting any extra. It's just there's more behind the scene work. And it's true. The packets that they have to put out to send to the state's attorney's mm -hmm. office would boggle the mind. That I've seen it, and uh, it, it's so it's options wise. Because I just want to, okay. you know, Make then sure we can say he, here's the options the select board's looking at, and then we can get some community buy-in. So safe to say that option one, which is well, stay as we are, which is a combination of we really want 20 hours, but yeah. we're really not finding the right fits for the hours. So, and that might open up the discussion, like Gene said, is maybe it's time that we sit down with our two constables and say, if you can't give us the 20 hours, we're going to have to open the position up to see what may be out there, right? Mm -hmm. Does that kind of sound like Gene? The, the second option is a full-time individual. Do we want to put money in time and resource by resources to have a full-time individual if if we could even find somebody um the third one we had pd i mean do we do we feel at this point with the board that that's an option or is it, do we feel that that's kind of a lost yeah, option that we should just no, cross it off? Option. Yeah. so maybe we just cross that one off the list that sound and then, and then outside source, so sheriffs or Vermont State Police or something else that will leave that alone. And then five, no coverage slash animal control. <laughs> you just cross you know, your that, fingers and hope for the best. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, well, you I mean heck, we, could, we, could, we could go for a full-time individual and get with no coverage, right? You're I right. mean, you could end up in that situation if you can't fill those. So, mm -hmm. so it sounds... So do you those four options do we have any other options that we can think of that do you want to leave no coverage as an option like just calling it a day and tell people they're going to take a gamble with the state police or do you want to leave that as an option. I mean if we're putting this to the public I don't think it hurts to have it as mm -hmm. an option, but yeah. I mean I'd, I'd want to hear. I sure don't want to do it, but I think it, we right. should hear from what they 
what right. the rest of people want. I'd want to hear a strong argument with resources behind it as to what are, you know, right. why yeah. would we go that way? What, and, what's and, the reasoning? And I know for so many years, we kind of got spoiled as a community by having VSP so close, like, you know, um, you know, we used to have one or two, you know, um, troopers that lived right in our immediate area. So we always kind of got that double coverage. And, and their cruisers parked yeah. in nice strategic spots. And, and now we don't have that right. plus, plus the VSP is shorthanded. So they don't come through as much as they do now because they're out doing their own stuff. And so, so, so we could, because I guess the next meeting, what I'd like to do is open up the options and start exploring them. So yeah. start get some feedback on, you know, we can start doing some homework on just just yeah. having the discussion. We're not going to vote on anything, but just how would that look if we went with option one, two, or four, or five okay. that we yeah. have down here? I will have to admit that I was reading here. Did you have an option where we were going to have our own police department? We did, yeah. So, but we just drew a line through it. Okay, because if you're going to do that, but you and I have had the conversation about other employees in town that are doing stuff that they're not. That's not their job. Right. And running a police department is not your job or your job. No. You already have jobs. Yeah. So I, I no, and as someone who's in the overseeing a police it. department, I write my resignation so fast. I, I don't want I don't want to say the only thing. <laughs> thing it's yeah, it's, I don't want to use not. the words of the only thing that's good for, but a community of our size, from what I've gathered for information, the one of the greater benefits that you can have by being a police department is sometimes the grants and other monies that are out there sure. to attach to that. So you can get cops grants. You can yeah, there's a lot of different sometimes grants you that you can get, get out there. Cops grants where they pay for a year and then you have to keep them retained for so many years, and each year your you know cost of that goes up. And you know, I, I just would like to say that my pitch here on options two or three, which is hire full-time or stay as we are. My experience is that Bethel has been very lucky um, because we do rely on these people being trained and properly trained and we're not constantly reviewing policies to update, you know, to make sure that our policies are up to date. And I think that certainly as a as a municipality, one of our responsibilities is liability. And, and by contracting out, transferring that liability to someone else is, is something that shouldn't be taken lightly. Yes, it's going to cost you more money because you're maybe you're only going to get, instead of 20 hours, maybe you're going to get less. But you have an incident, one incident. And, you know, it's, and it's a lot, you know, it's a, it's a lot for your community and it's a lot, not that Justin and Oscar aren't wonderful people because they are, but situations happen and, you know, it's, it's, a uh, you know, yeah, it's something that I think that needs to be weighted a bit more heavily than just, it's about the money. So, so we'll get those options out there. Yep. And I'll we'll do a little research. We can advertise those a little bit and then we can just start breaking those down. Does anyone talk to Royalton how they can handle three or four people? And they get a in? lot of grants. So just like we were talking about, because they're a police department, they get a lot of grants to go mm -hmm. patrol the interstate and other places like that. So they can spend time they do. in those areas. And, um, you, and, and that's, that's kind of one of those benefits that I was talking about. Is. By having a police department, you can qualify for a lot of these pieces. Really, uh, I feel a thing. But is there any way that everybody's talking about regionalizing things? Uh, you know, working with Royalton and Rochester, I don't know how it would all work out, but have a regional sure. police I mean, department with six or seven guys that, okay, Royalton's got a major oops, so they could take all of them there for that afternoon or whatever but yeah got one person that could i know i know it's something to talk to i mean i'd mentioned it to oscar and he'd had a conversation at one point with loretta about maybe we don't contract with the bsp or the sheriff's office we contract with royalton 
because you're right, they can participate and click it or ticket and DUI stuff. And then they're being able to pay their people, you know, time and a half to do those certain patrols. And they can also get cops grants, they can get equipment grant. They, they do qualify for stuff that we don't. But that is a benefit, um, and that is something that Oscar had talked to them about. So it's something I could certainly reach out to Loretta because last I knew she was shorthanded. It was her and Oscar, and because Mark Preston was gone, I think someone else left. So I'm not sure who's left in Royalton besides Loretta and Oscar right now. I know, I know, one of the sheriffs that's running for Windsor County Sheriff, uh, and one of his proposals that's not being done now is to do what you were talking about, Dave, where getting into the smaller communities and maybe they have make it up one officer that mm -hmm. controls these two communities all the time. That's contracted, yeah, you know, right. inside yep, that, absolutely. that they don't have. But the other thing too, is they just don't have enough bodies right now to do it. You know, I mean, it's the want versus the, you know, what's realistic right now. So, but so I can reach out to the, Serve yeah, SP, Loretta, the sheriff, and look at a salary survey for, or look at like a PD, because it's not yeah. just the salary. You're also talking equipment, you know, <laughs> vehicle wouldn't probably be just a used car. Well, it's not just the budget. It's what, what is realistic at this point, you know, yeah. um, on that. Crystal clear about what we're looking for what kind of duties we want this person or persons or agency or whatever to provide. I think we need to be crystal clear about that. Talking about a constable, that's one thing. Um, I would, right. and, and, and I'm not sure, well, I'm sure the community is not clear about that. Right. Um, Everybody has something different than they you, want. When you, you, when you talk about, about public safety and law enforcement, that conjures up different images in different people. And there's a big difference between a constable that I'd never heard of until I came to Vermont and, you know, police. Yeah. So, uh, and it's clear from reading those responses again that the community is not clear on that distinction. Um, no, but where cops came from, right? No. England. Oh. Constable on patrol. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And it, it used to be, you know, the, the big difference between a constable and, and an officer was the credentials. It was the big differences. Right. But now, Again, kind of where policies have gone, the credentials for for a constable are the same as the credential for for a police officer. So yeah. it, it becomes that same thing that even if you get a constable, it's probably going to be trained the same as, a, you know. Yeah, because um, originally because the, constables could just be any person. Yeah. Then, oh, I want to say maybe 10 years ago, but uh, they said <laughs> constables had to become part-time certified. So they had a special program through the police academy to get these, if you were going to be a constable, you had to actually be law enforcement right. trained, which was a great idea because yeah. uh, you had people running around being a constable that didn't have, you know, the training. So yes, we're lucky that yeah. both of our constables are, you know, uh, two E's, which- I think that's good when we but, yeah. start this path yeah. through, through talking this discussion want? is you know, to revisit what we're looking for. Um, and I think everybody wants something different. A year worth it for traffic control. Well, and I think and dog warden. Right, it, dog <laughs> I mean, warden <laughs> separate. You're right, but yeah. traffic control, and you know, I think you know, you still would need other stuff. So it's hard. You know, you just unfortunately you can't rely on the VSP anymore, and it's too bad because they're so short staffed too. It's, so, just, it's too yeah. bad. Anyway, all right. All right. So, well, we'll outline. So these. we'll continue our discussion with the. So that's why I gave you the survey. So you Constable. Guys, I had to reread the results myself. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is what they said. Um, did we have anything left that was on the town manager's report? Just um, one. So we were awarded, it was on your grant list, mm -hmm. the VTrans Bike Ped grant for 424000 Our local match is 106 for 530 So that... Um, so we were awarded that. So that's great. So we're looking at, we have currently secured 
um, you know, like $1.6 million just in transportation grants. Um, they obviously have others pending, and then that doesn't include the um, VOREC of 331000 and then, you know, phase two of the skate park that Ellie had secured, mm -hmm. um, which was a $25,000 um, grant. So that's on there, too. So and she, she reported the other day that they had a donation. Yes, they had a large donation. Yep, that's nice. what I heard. That's awesome. $10,000. Yep, I heard they, they got a $10,000 donation. That's amazing. Just uh, in general or for something specific? The, for the phase two of the skate park. Um, so, yeah, so I mean, I feel like oh, we're doing well as far as, you know, certainly writing grants is great. And, you know, now it's just. For me, for me, it's yeah, the overseeing yeah. and the paperwork. And well, again, I the amount write, of grant money that we've gotten is I got to write, you know, RFPs. Well, I've been trying and working with Two Rivers, Rita is awesome and uh, she's super helpful. And then, yeah, as you can see, I have two RFPs that I haven't written yet that I need to write. But, anyways, we're getting there. So, I had that, and I also wanted to say, uh, that Hazen Saul's last day is August 18th, and I'm sad to see him go, but he has a young family, and we have to make financial choices that benefit our family, and I completely respect that, but we're going to miss him because he has this excellent work ethic and just this, this great personality. So we have risk for this. No, don't no, blame me. No, but we I didn't uh, even know about it. Yeah, I texted Chris and he's like, What are you talking about? So, but um, so we're sad to see him go. The great thing is Hazen has agreed to come back to be our seasonal, one of our seasonal. So while he's gone, you know, uh AJ and, and Morgan are sad and gonna miss him. He's he is gonna be our seasonal. So Paul Feeney has agreed to come back as our seasonal, which okay. is great. So we're still going to be looking for someone to fill Richard's seat, um, but obviously looking for a full-time person. I've just put the ad in the newspaper. I already published it on the state website. So it goes to Holly Hayden, and then anybody who's on the listserv gets it. Um, so Is we there are, any opportunities with the, the kid that's <laughs> helping out? Adam, uh, no. On doing a winter maintenance? Or? Um, I don't... He... So I would, I'd have to talk to Demi at South yeah. Royalton because he does not have a CDL and he does oh, Demi gotcha. sidewalk plowing. Okay. And so we obviously, uh, you know, it's going to cost us, you know, approximately $10,000, I guess, to get somebody a CDL. We had done that yeah. before and the person, you know, moved on, didn't stay long. So yeah. obviously we want a to get somebody with a CDL because if we're going to make that sort of a commitment, somebody's going to have to sign a contract that they're agreeing to stay or something. Or that they pay back. The yeah. The Somehow I mean, I continue we can to get legally it. do that, but I don't know. I'd have to find out, but at least and what we're saying and Morgan and AJ are also saying is the CDL, they can train them to be equipment operators, but you know, you need the right personality. We need someone who's positive, who's a team player, who, you know, just really has the ability to get along and, and learn, but somebody who has, you know, a CDL. So the ads are out and we uh, well, I know just the, hear from people. Just the attention to detail that Adam, right? Is that Adam? The, the young guy hired yeah. him all? Yeah, he's nice, isn't he? That, right? I mean, just like, you know, wire brushing the steel and repainting the fences and stuff. I mean, just... Just that little bit of attention to detail goes a very, very long way. Like, yeah. He I've has had so many compliments with just some of the things that normally didn't get done that have gotten done this year. Well, it's been good and, because of bringing somebody in separately apart from Richard who had water sewer duties. And so that compliment really goes to Richard. He has yeah. overseen Adam and, you know, a couple people came brought up about the fence. I think it might've been Dave Algegetti because he was working at Babes and said, Hey, you know, this fence needs some work. And then, We've done other stuff. And of course, Paul Valley has done some great work for us at, at the band shell and uh, pea vine and the little pocket park. And we're going to get Adam to paint that, but it's been nice paying somebody without a CDL to do some of this work. And yeah, uh, I think Richard has done a great job overseeing him. And uh, so I'm very thankful to Richard yeah. for, for doing that. Um, but he is, and he's a nice, uh, Adam is a nice young man. And um, right. so, no, that's it for me. Just wanted to tell you about the Hazen and, and awarding the grant. And select board meeting minutes from the 11th. We have any.
changes to that? Are we good to approve as written? I'm good. All right, Paul's moved it. Second. Okay, all in favor? Let's give Regina a chance. Aye. To... Aye. <laughs> all right, and our other communications, there was quite a bit in our packet there. The um, with other communications, the Ford Festival Committee was in there, um, Equity Inclusion Committee. Um, if there was something in there, I thought. Act 250 end. Spotlight. Energy Committee, yep. Uh, Paul Valley's a volunteer spotlight. And you're, these are preliminary year end numbers because it's not over. So, uh, you know, we're still paying bills, which we will until the end of August. So, this is where we sit preliminarily. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't made all the audit adjustments, but these were June, uh, so far, June 30 numbers. Nice, yep. Also, too, I saw in the news that they, um, you haven't noticed yet, via MVP and, oh, yeah. Yeah, MVP yeah, just and Blue Cross are asking for like 15%, but I heard they just passed, they awarded something, which I think is for people who have to go into the network or the, not the network, the, yeah, I guess, but they were asking for a big increase and, um, and now I'd mentioned it to Chris, so I'm hoping that normally when they do that, that yeah. they don't always give it to them. Um, the state public service board, whoever reviews that, but still, 15% is great. Well, it's we'll see. One of the continuing largest increases a year that uh, a family is healthcare. So, I know. great, Gene, you had yes. Yeah. Uh, several months, maybe a couple months ago, you asked for somebody to attend a White River Valley Consortium Working Communities Challenge Project. Was that the one that, you that was held right here? here. Yeah. You were there, okay, Chris. Yeah. So I just thought today uh, they had a, uh, a meeting in uh, Fairley, which was a demonstration project of a, a renovation of a community of a building downtown uh, that was in their business district that uh, they were able to basically replace the building. They all, all they saved was the foundation. Wow. But uh, in, in the course of the presentation, just some things that I made note of that I think are worth uh, First of all, fairly with a population of a thousand, uh, hired a developer zoning coordinator. So this person's on their staff full time to do commit do uh, development work, economic development, and the whole zoning piece. Uh, so that was uh, huge. <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah, we did. We had someone in Bristol who did part time, but did zoning and economic development, and it was great. They worked with the listers and permitting, and they were on the PC. It was such a so, sweet fit. So anyway, I I was number one impressed by that. A community yeah. of a thousand, uh, had half the size of 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 us, and that person. Uh, is very proactive. Every time there's a person comes in, looks for a building permit, he says, okay, I want to work with you to make sure that what you want to build can meet muster when it comes to zoning. And okay. so they, they have the time and energy or whatever, the, the mandate and the support from the community to actually work with the developer and to make sure, A, that what they want to do is going to be adopted or approved, but also, did you know that this, this fund, this fund, this fund, you can apply for X, Y, Z, if you make any of your housing units available, uh, community, ADA accessible, you can apply for X, Y, da, 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 uh, and I will help you make do those applications the work still may 
it's a, it's a very close interworking relationship between the public and public agencies and the private developer. So that uh, this particular piece uh, is going to have uh, a commercial retail front and then seven units of uh, residential units of uh, so efficiency apartments, nice. two one bedroom apartments, two of them ADA accessible uh, and one point some million dollars. Uh, and it's all possible because the community, in my opinion, yeah, had the foresight it. to have the staff to be able to work with, the, and it's brand new, but this is the first piece this young man has done of this scale. He has done, been, done property management and he owns some properties, but this is the first thing that he's really built from ground up. And so you have a, a, from a, a kid with a lot of energy <laughs> and vision and then a seasoned expert working with him to make sure that all the ducks are in a row. I was very, very uh, impressed. Uh, the architecture, it will, it, while they are not renovating, that will be consistent with a building that burned down, a century building that burned down that was across the street. Oh, neat when they had a major fire that took out that whole side of their their downtown community. Wow, so they still have that. So they asset. will still, it will still physically represent, it'll, it'll have the appearance and it will blend into that historic character. Uh, there were some other things that that particular uh, individual did for that town. They did not have a town plan that was really very effective. Now they have one. They did not have a unified zoning right. bylaw. Now they have one. But so that those some and and he kept the emphasized over and over and over again. We have an asset that not every little community has. We have a water department and they don't have a sewer department. Mm -hmm. Well, we have <laughs> water and sewer. Right. We have- We do. I we, agree. We, we, I actually talked to somebody about this recently who was, I wasn't sure if they were gonna be retiring for what they did. I said, hey, do you need something, Julie? Oh, okay, thanks. I don't know what else. Perfect. Thank you. So, um, so yeah. I talked to them because of that, saying, hey, you know, we're going to do a townwide reappraisal. Plus, you know, we have to do some updates to the town plan and we doing zoning and we don't do we don't right now do much uh, enforcement or going out and looking and saying, hey, you know, what? I'm going to meet with this person to make sure they build and to let people know, hey, do that economic development piece. So I did mention to someone recently, like, hey. If in the next year or so you're thinking about making a change, come see me first, please, because it, you know I, I think that it's uh, that that it's very important that zoning and economic development can really go hand in hand, especially if you have someone who's well versed in it who also can learn about what's out there and turn people on and get people to come to Bethel by saying, "Hey, Bethel has somebody who knows what they're doing." And, and help you find money to maybe achieve these goals. So I think that's great. I'm so, amazed that Fairly so has Fair, done that. Fairly has done that. And, and I noticed in the ARPA thing, somebody suggested we need to hire economic development. an economic development. Yep. Energy committee is looking yep. for ass seeking. And, and I suggested somebody with climate, but they're looking for somebody to be an energy guru that we might share. Well, I with think nearby communities. So there may be. It may be a person with multiple hats because it's something that Chris had mentioned before, and I agree with him, is 
if we have somebody in the office who does these things, they're going to be familiar with the town plan and say, okay, these are the energy goals laid out in your town plan. How are we going to achieve them? Right. And it, you know, so it's, you know, so yeah, I, I, I think that's definitely something to think about. So I, I, so I wanted to report that. Thank you. Uh, I think it was, uh, from my perspective, a meeting well worth uh, attending. Uh, and uh, while they did not have the historic building designation that they needed to uh, or chosen to comply with, uh, they certainly had some things that, uh, some pieces put together that amplified that public private linkage uh, teamwork that I think we could learn a whole lot from. Nice. Uh, well, thanks for going to Fairly. That's nice that you went out and bought it. Well, Chris there. Sargent was going, so I was able to. Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, cool. So. All right. Thanks, Gene. Anything else to come before the board? Okay, hearing none, just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All right. Good night. Thanks, everybody.